if there was Christianity in Ethiopia, if an Ethiopian queen could go to, to, to Israel to visit a king and come back. Actually, you know, Ethiopia was never colonized. But if you look at their heritage, the Christianity is deep in there. Exactly. So I'll tell you one, one of the things that now education does. Education comes and now washes the Africans. Say white washes. Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> so they come and whitewash us, yeah, yeah, and 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 um, they make they glorify the Europeans' culture, and they denigrate the African culture, and the, then you know I, I do a lot of uh, content uh, generation. Mm. If you go and do Googled for stock photos mm. for anything to do with success, you will not see a black family being connected to success it's idiocy if you it's not necessarily idiocy by the way it is it is as in i'm saying whoever came up with that idea no no, no. it is idiotic. us as africans mm. we've not owned up that space i'm talking about today if you go to google if you go to any place where you can get um it's an algorithm though okay yeah that's what i'm talking about mm. if you go where you can be able to get photos you want to exemplify something something nice like success you know prosperity Seldom would you get an African photo or, or a photo with African people depicting that. But if you looked for, at poverty, disease, and so on, you're going to get Africans easily, as in like that, top on the list. Do you want to talk about Uganda's airport? <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't going to go there. Anyway, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm talking about education. So what education does is it, it is systemic. It's systematic in the way that it corrodes a certain level of, of, of uh, awareness while building mm. another level of awareness. Do you get that? Mm. So it, it, it removes to install. Exactly. Yeah. So one of the ways in which it installs, one of the things it, it removes is language. There we go. Now we're conversing in English. Yes. And language, the tongue is a custodian of identity and history. That is why Africa's problem is very significant because our history was mostly trans, um, translated or shared mm. by um, it was oral. Mm, mm, mm. It was never written. It was never written. Yeah. Now you mentioned Ethiopia. One of the reasons why Ethiopia stands out, and it stands out, excuse me, with the with the nations of of China, of Japan, of India is now the, the indians were, col- were colonized part of china was colonized yeah but let me tell you why it stands out among those people that even if they were colonized their mm. culture mm. remained mm. they had an alphabet mm. ethiopia did what does an alphabet represent language what does language represent everything culture and identity identity you get yeah so the Ethiopians being able to write their own stories, write their own history and hold on to it is why today someone feels like, you know what? We have to break this country up. Yeah. And that's what's happening today. Right now. Someone wa- someone deliberately wants to break up that country. Yeah. By dividing them based on, uh, what's the word I want to use? unnatural division these are the same people did you see what happened to because maybe i'm going uh, far away but did you see what happened to uh, libya <laughs> <laughs> so this is what i'm saying yeah that we as africans have got to own our truth as men right and it starts with a man because what i was telling you now when they, when the, when the European comes and introduces the education system, it's it's it is modified specifically for Africa. How do you know that in the West there is no such thing as boarding school for everybody? Do you know who goes to boarding school in the West? Mm-hmm. The children of the super rich, whose parents are too busy to look after them, or the children of people who need to be groomed for something, mm. and then orphans. But ordinary everyday children, they go to day school. Or they are homeschooled. Or they are homeschooled. Why? Because the most important learning happens at home. In the home, in the community. 
So, after colonialism which took the father away from home, the European comes in and de- designs an education system that takes the child away from home to boarding school. Oh, you guy. So, 13 weeks, 39 weeks out of 52 weeks are yeah. The if child I, is nowhere. The child is not let me say yes, let me say 13 weeks out of term. That is three times a week. Uh, 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 three uh, <clears throat> that is nine months of that's that is the equivalence of a pregnancy that's what i'm trying to tell you yeah that for a whole year your, our children were in boarding school for 30 for 39 weeks they are not in our presence i saw something very heartbreaking and and, and you wonder why yeah we can't relate with our children yeah because for nine months out of a year they are away from home and that is why now during the pandemic children have been home and parents have been stressed because all they, of a, they no don't know idea. who their children are yeah because you know the, the idea here is even as we're going to go for a short break the idea here is imprint thank you imprint is the idea of identity because True. you can't sometimes you can't just have your identity out of your own you come from somewhere speak about the fingerprint there is an imprint in your identity Like I told you the other day uh, something very sensitive I am I am my father's son. Mm-hmm. We we've not necessarily <laughs> broken it down and I, so I, I don't I think I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I finally got what you mean. <laughs> I am my father's son. Yes. Why? Because there's an imprint or there's a lack of imprint on it. Yes. So whatever you've been talking about in summary what I can say is this mm. that when you look at the African man today You're going to define the African man by the imprint that is on him, fact, or the it's not, imprint it's that is. African. It, it's it, he's hardly African, by the way, and that imprint is not from the community. It is not authentic. It is borrowed. It is foreign, and it is also being, you know, worshipped, so to speak. Telenovela. Yeah. Porn. Yeah. I think Africa we can do better. We're gonna come back after this <laughs> short break. <laughs>
Welcome back to Solid Jamaz. We're doing great. I hope you're still tuned in and uh, you are following our, what we're discussing here. This is by no means probably the end of this discussion. It, it's going to keep going on. Mm-hmm. And do you find this discussion foreign to you, by the way? It could be that probably you've been so much affected by the imprint that is foreign that looks like this, what we're saying here is not important. Mm. But I do think it is important that we get the veil off of our eyes and we know exactly what is going on and then we start redeeming ourselves. Because w- w- what I'm thinking is that if we don't redeem ourselves, that's why I was, I was asking you, 500 years ago, do you think there's any point in time when someone decided, let us do something about this mess? I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I think it was 2019 or 2018 when uh, the president of Ghana uh, Ado, he has too many yeah. names. He's called Nana Akufo Ado. Yes. Yeah. He declared the year of the return. Did you ever hear that? Uh, no. What I know about Akufo Ado is that he told off the French president. Everyone in, should in tell off the French. <laughs> Everyone. I'm glad I dropped out of the French class. Yeah. For going did? to art. Yeah. Okay. Because one, the teacher was feeling superior to me and was treating me like I didn't understand. But what's wrong with not understanding French? I'm not French. Yeah. So I, that's how I dropped into, uh, I went into the art class. Before we can go far, <laughs> we, had, we had a discussion the other day. Oh, right? we, should, we should come back to Akofo eventually, yes. Yeah, we're going to come back to Akofo. Uh. In, our, in our WhatsApp group, by the way, there was some conversation going on. Mm. They actually brought um, a, a, a video of someone who was struggling mm. to communicate in English, a leader in mm. Africa. Mm. You know what I did? Mm-hmm. I just asked that, that those guys who were discussing, have you ever listened to the Secretary General of the UN speaking English? Yes. It is broken. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is struggling. Let me, let me tell you for me the people that I respect. Yeah. Hmm? The people of Iran. Uh huh. There will never be a day where the Iranian Prime Minister or President or the Chinese president is ever going to address the UN in, in, in English. English. Africans, what happened to you? We all go there and we speak. Uh, but you know, it, something interesting about the UN. Okay, we're going to come back to it. <laughs> but something interesting about the UN. Did you know that it has translators? Yes. For every single damn language in the face of the earth. If you don't, tong, tong, there's a translator <laughs> for that stuff. <laughs> Why don't we have an African language to be translated? I really, exactly. I really think that... Uh, so we are going back. That is now the the end result of Let me colonialism. Tell you, I have I have owned you if I can get you to speak my language. That's it. So clearly Africans don't own themselves. We don't own ourselves. Even us who are here sounding really intelligent and brilliant, mm. we cannot negate the fact that that is a thing. So we, we will eventually move away from that. But we can't say, and that's where we are going. What should the Afri- what should the Africa of the future look like? How how should it? How should the men go about? Take that? me back to Kofu, uh, uh, Nana Kofu. Yes. Yeah. So 2018, it declares they have return, and what that means yeah. is that they were they were commemorating about five, 500 years of slavery, mm. and they said, you know what? As of this year, mm. anyone in the diaspora who wants to come back home, mm. we are setting up policies for you to come buy land, set up businesses, mm. and this is happening in Ghana. This is happening in Senegal. How about Nigeria? Those ones are still exporting. <laughs> <laughs> Those ones are still exporting Nigerianism. But what, what I'm saying is, there is a conscious, there is a conscious move right now yeah. for peop, for the black man to come back home. And this is what Marcus Garvey um, prophesied in the early 1920s and 30s.